Hi, I'm Chuck Purvis, CEO of Coastal Credit Union. This is, by all accounts, our video series dedicated to giving you tips and tools to help you bank better to live better. Welcome. Today, I'm with Tammy Langton, our Chief Financial Risk and People Officer, to discuss inflation and how it's affecting our economy. Thanks for being here, Tammy. I want to help our members understand what inflation looks like and how it happens. Explain to us what's causing this and some of the factors. Well, there there are a lot of variables that come into play, but I think as a consumer, what we're seeing the most is it's really the imbalance that's been created in that supply and demand equation. So let me give you a couple of examples of how we've gotten to this point. So back when COVID started, the Fed dropped the rates all the way down to zero. Yep. And so what that did is it influenced the rest of the curve and brought down the cost of borrowing. When you say curve, you're talking about longer term rates. That's right. All across, all across the curve, whether you were including 30 year mortgages or an auto loan or your credit card, all of that came down um, in terms of of borrowing expense. At the same time, I think people were starting to rethink their situations because of COVID. right? Right. So. Maybe I live in a crowded apartment building and that's no longer comfortable to me. And Or maybe um, I've bought my home, but now I need an office space where I can work. Or my kids are trying to learn while I'm working as well, so I need a little bit of a bigger home. Or, you know, travel was really cut off. And so yeah. a lot of people look to make that investment in a vacation yeah. home. And so what we saw was the demand, for example, on the housing side went way up. Yep. But there's only but so many housing units available. Can't right? build them fast enough. Right, right. Yeah. And so because the supply was limited, we see prices going up. People would pay more just to ensure they got the house. That's right. But it also happened on the consumer side for goods right. as well. So I think also what COVID did to further complicate things right. is it affected our supply chain. Yeah. A lot of manufacturers had to shut down at the beginning of COVID. And so they got behind on the supply yeah. side. And then when they started up again, they didn't have as many workers wanting to return to that same kind of work environment. Yeah. They felt safer staying and working from home. Right. And so they're trying to catch up with supply. At the same time, there's a shortage when it comes to staffing and employment. And yeah. so they're fighting that as yeah. well. It's crazy. So there have been a ton of changes in the economy in the past two years since COVID started. So what, what's next? You know, rates are going up. Inflation's high. You've got scarcity of stuff we want to buy. Uh, what's next? So part of what you're seeing in rates going up is what the Fed's doing to help this equation right. that's out of balance, right. right? So what they're doing is you, we've already started to see it. The rates have started to go up. And right. it, the Fed has announced plans to be pretty aggressive in continuing to increase yeah. those rates throughout the year. But really, what they're trying to do is bring balance back to that equation. So as rates go up, it costs more to borrow. And so buying power goes down. The goal being giving the supply side a chance to catch up. And once that finally happens, we'll start to see prices Prices stabilize. stabilize. Right. So what ideas should our members be thinking about when they're trying to cope with this increased cost of living caused by inflation? Gas is up, food's up housing's up, what should they be thinking about and focused on? Well, now's a great time to look for those programs that offer rewards for your spending. So credit cards could be a strategic way to combat that. So Coastal, for example, has a great card that gives you cash back on a percentage of purchases or even a discount in price per gallon at the pump. Right. Now, you you have to be a little bit careful about that because, of course, interest rates are going up on credit cards, too. So you want to be careful about not accruing interest and undoing those benefits. Yeah, you get these benefits and give it back and paying more interest. Right, right. But strategically using that credit card for things you have to spend money on, like gas and groceries, using that card to get those points back might be one way you can help alleviate that. That will help lower the overall cost. At least a little bit. That's such a great point. So what would you recommend to members who are now trying to buy a house? 
prices are up, rates are going up. What would you recommend to them? Right, and we've seen that from the Fed moves, what got impacted right off the bat was yeah. mortgage side. And we see mortgage rates now creep into the 5% range. And, and I think people who have been in this recent market, that's shocking, right? To go from the 3% into the 5% range, and so there's concern. But if you look back historically, 5% is still a pretty good rate on My mortgage. first mortgage in the early 90s was 8.5%, and we thought that was fine. Right, exactly. Same thing for me, 7%, right. I thought that was a great, now it's a great deal. Of. That's right. And so the fact that rates are going up doesn't necessarily take you out of the housing right. market, but it is a good time to engage a financial advisor to help or navigate a mortgage loan officer or right. somebody that can help navigate. Right, because there are different financing options right. that are available. And I think fixed rate was, you know, it's very easy to understand and it was very cheap borrowing, right. but now adjustable rates are coming back into the picture and it could be the right choice the for you. Are lower. That's right. And I and I think using that financial advisor or mortgage loan officer yeah. to run scenarios on what might be the right one for you based on how long yeah. you plan to stay in that home, even taking a look at what is your purchase price range yeah. and what financing option might be the best. Tammy, that is such great advice. I really appreciate all you do to help lead the organization, our employees, and really providing these insights to members. And I am so glad you can join me today. If you want to learn more about how Coastal can advise you on getting a mortgage or even buying a home, watch previous episodes of By All Accounts, where my guest was Wendy Dawson, VP of Mortgage Lending. See you next time.